And we finally made it. The moment we've been all waiting for, and that's how to actually buy stocks in ETFs using an online broker, maybe like Quest Trade. Now, at the end of the day, I promise you, you don't need to be super smart because the process is not rocket science. But what you do have to do is you should have a cell phone or a computer in order to process the trades. And it actually blew my mind back in school when they would say, Anton, you're not gonna have a calculator in your pocket for the rest of your life, so you should be studying all these equations and whatnot and nowadays now of course you do have the option of using a financial advisor uh, you go to the bank and you sign up with them uh, the problem with that is that the fees they're gonna charge you is gonna be a lot higher than the fees you're gonna be charged if you're gonna be using an online broker number one number two with an online broker you have a lot more control over your own investments therefore the risk you're taking you feel personally responsible for if you don't mind spending five minutes a week just tracking down the companies that you've invested into, my advice is always go with your own online brokerage account. I personally use Quest Trade. What is Quest Trade? Hey Alexa, what is Quest Trade? Quest Trade is an online brokerage firm and wealth management firm based in Canada. There you have it. Now you know. But jokes aside, Quest Trade is one of the first online brokerages in Canada and I've actually made a video uh, I'll post a link somewhere here. You guys can go check that out with all the pros and cons, but in a nutshell, Quest Trade charges you some of the lowest commission fees out there. And the commission fees go somewhere between $5 and they go all the way up to $10, depending how much money you put in. So typically it's gonna be $4.99, and if you buy more than 500 shares, it can go up to $10 per trade. The main rule of thumb that I like to use when buying stocks with Quest Trade is never buy less than $500 worth. And that's because the minimum commission fee is gonna be $5. So if you buy, let's say $50 worth of stock, in that case, a $5 commission fee is 10% of your total cash. That's too much. And instead, try not to buy less than $500 worth of stock. That's when $5 commission doesn't look so bad in comparison to a $500 investment. You smart. And the best thing is if you buy ETFs in Quest Trade, you're actually not charged any commission fee whatsoever. Yup, an absolute zero. Now that is until you sell those ETFs. And in that case, you're gonna be charged the same as selling a stock, and that would be five bucks. And if you do want to sign up with Quest Trade, make sure to use the referral link I'm going to leave down in the description below. And in that case, you get free money and I get free money. So that's like a win-win. Now let's finally get into the process of buying a stock with Quest Trade. Now you're going to have two options. Either you can use a mobile app or you can use a website and you can use your desktop or a laptop. Now in my experience, 90% of the time, it's gonna be done through your mobile device. Now that's because it is so convenient. You can do it on the go, you can do it in a grocery store, you can do it in an elevator, you can do it when you're sitting on the toilet, if that's your thing. Now one thing to keep in mind is the stock market is open from 9.30 to 4 p.m. And if you have a full-time job where you work from, let's say, nine to five, in that case, you might wanna grab a water break or a bathroom break so you can jump on your app and quickly make some trades hopefully buying the dip. You can pretty much do all the same things on the mobile app as you can do on the website, except for one thing. Now the website offers you a chat feature, which the app does not. So if you have any direct questions to Questrate, you're gonna have to go on the website into the chat feature to ask them those questions. Now let's not waste any more time and jump right into the app. Once you're in the app, you're gonna be in the main general section. Now there's a few things to keep in mind at the top, left corner, you're gonna have those three lines. If you click on that, it takes you to the full menu of other things you can do in the app other than trading. Uh, one of the main ones that I like to use is if you click on account requests, you have the option to exchange from Canadian to US dollars and US to Canadian dollars. This is the part of the app where you're gonna do that. Now, in order to get back to the trading portion, you're gonna click back on the three lines at the top and click trading. You're back in the general area. You need to watch out for the three tabs that are called balances, positions, and orders because they serve different purposes. For example, balances here is a general area and it's gonna show you what is your total equity, total cash. Now this is a very general perspective of what you have in your accounts. If you click on positions, 
Here it's gonna show you all the stocks in ETFs that you currently own and how they're performing at the moment. And if you click on the last step, it's called the orders. This is where it's gonna show you the current or executed trades that you've made in within the 24 hour frame. So let's go back into balances. This is the general area. This is your profile. This is where it's gonna show you total equity, how much cash you have. And my advice, always have some cash in case that you wanna buy the dips in the stock market. And one thing to keep in mind, there's a little check mark right there, that's called combined. I personally, I like to have that check mark off. Now let's find the stock that you're gonna invest in. Now hopefully you've done your research and you know for a fact what you're gonna invest in. For example, today, I want to invest in some Enbridge shares for multiple reasons that I, I don't wanna waste your time and go through that today. Maybe I'm gonna go through in my next video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video. How do we do that? We're gonna click in this on the search feature in the left top corner and we're gonna find our ticker symbol, which is enb.to. Now what the .to actually means is that the stock is being traded in the Toronto Stock Exchange. Yes, I said Toronto. That's how the locals say it, not Toronto. Keep that in mind. Now we're gonna click on that and it gives you the full profile of Enbridge the stock. Now you can go through certain things here, but the main things are gonna be on level one, which you can actually tag on and off, you're gonna see the bid price and the asking price. Now the bid price is the price that the people are actually willing to pay for the stock, and the ask price is the price that the stock owners are selling it for. And a few important metrics down here is gonna be the market cap on the left side, and a little bit lower, the yield. That's the dividend yield. And the dividend yield for Enbridge is actually very nice, and it's 7.35%, one of the many reasons why I love to own some Enbridge. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more and we click on the chart feature, and this is what a lot of people actually don't know about Quest Trade, the app, is you can actually monitor the price movement by one day, five days, three months, one year, and so on and so forth. So if you want to buy the dips, this is the area in the app that you're gonna have to watch out for. Now we're gonna scroll all the way up and you actually have different ways that you can actually buy the stock. What I like to do, I'm gonna click the buy and sell option at the right top corner and it takes you into the order entry window. Now make sure that the name is correct. Make sure it's called the STK, stands for stocks. And what you're gonna click, you're gonna click this 15 second thing on the right side. And what it does is it refreshes the page to give you the absolute freshest price of the stock that you're given. Now the bid price is gonna be a little bit on the left, the ask price is gonna be on the right. What I like to do is I like to get my price as close as possible to the bid because the bid price is always gonna be lower than the ask price. So if I'm buying a stock, I wanna buy it for as cheap as possible, and I'm, when I'm selling a stock, I wanna sell it for as expensive as possible. Now, in the quantity area, you're gonna, you're gonna put how many shares you want to put in. In my case, I would want to buy 20 shares of Enbridge, and the next step, order type. The limit order and market order are gonna be the main ones. What is the difference? Market order is exactly how much the stock is being traded at this particular moment. And limit order is how much you're willing to actually pay for the stock. The problem with limit order is if you put a price that is way too low and the price of the stock during that day does not get to that price, the entire order is gonna be vanished. So if you want your order to go through 100%, you might wanna choose the market order option. In the duration tab, you have many options. I like to only stick to the top two, which is day and GTC. GTC stands for good till canceled. So if you put in an order and then you click on the GTC, the order is gonna stay in the market until you cancel it. Otherwise, we're gonna click on day and this order is gonna be good until the end of the market day, which is gonna be four o'clock. I'm gonna make sure that it's gonna go into my RRSP account. If you have other accounts, you can choose other accounts. I like to stick with RRSP and then we're gonna click buy. Boom. Make sure you go through the next page very well. Confirm the account, confirm the trade value. Commission, commission fees typically around $5 unless you go over 500 shares, which is not the case most of the time. And after praying to the stock market gods that this is the right buy, you're gonna click send order. Order filled at the bottom at the average fill price of 45.3. And the last final thing you're gonna do is you're gonna have to track how well your investment is performing. And in order to do that, we're gonna click on the account at the top. 
We're gonna click on positions and there you have it, Embridge.to 20 shares. Now the positions tab is exactly the tab that you wanna go to to monitor how well your investments are actually doing, whether they're going up in price, whether they're going down price, and you're gonna monitor whether you wanna keep it for long term or get rid of it. Now at this point, we're not done just yet. We're gonna head back into the general page by clicking on balances. And you guys gotta see that I still have $102 available in my wallet. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to buy an ETF. Again, the beauty of buying ETFs in Questrade is that they do not charge you any commission fees until you sell that ETF. So it could be a good idea to find a good solid ETF and hold it for long, 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 long term that you're only gonna have to sell once all the way down the road, maybe in five to 10 or 15, 20 years. So the ETF that I'm interested in to buy today is gonna to be VFV.to, which is a Vanguard ETF that tracks the movement of an S&P 500. So the process for buying ETFs is exactly the same as buying a stock, which you already know. We're gonna head into the right top corner by clicking buy and sell, and we're gonna check the price of this ETF is around $87 and 68 to 69 cents. Because I know I only have $100 available, I'm gonna pick only one, one share of this ETF. I'm gonna refresh one more time to make sure that the price did not change. Well, it did kind of a little bit, it dropped down, and I'm gonna hit the market because I want the trade to go through immediately. We're gonna check that it's gonna go in day, and the account is gonna be RSP, click buy takes you to the last page where we're gonna confirm everything and this is the best part. Check the commission fees, it is a fat zero. So, we're gonna send the order and we're gonna wait until the order goes through. Boom, order filled, head back to account, positions, wham, bam, thank you ma'am. There I have one share of VFV.to. So now that you know exactly how to buy stocks with Questrade, let me know in the comments below what was your first stock or ETF that you actually purchased. And if you want a little bit more knowledge about stock market, make sure to check out this video and I'll see you in the next one.